In our auto watch tonight, the tally is in and the United Auto Workers have overwhelmingly voted to authorize a strike. UAW President Sean Fain announced today that the margin was 97% in favor with just 3% against. Now, this vote does not mean the union is now on strike. Instead, it authorizes leadership to announce a strike if negotiations fail before the current contract expires on September the 14th. Wall Street analysts say there is more than 50% likelihood of a strike. Joining us tonight is Bob King, former president of the UAW from 2010 to 2014. Thanks for joining us today, Bob. Happy to be here. All right. So this is a very exciting time for everyone in the UAW. Sean Fain has made it clear that contract extensions are off the table, even though some of the automakers are now suggesting that perhaps that's a possibility. So first of all, do you think he's going to keep his word on that? And second of all, how likely do you think a strike is? Absolutely, he's going to keep his word. He's given the companies plenty of time to come to the table with serious offers and their failure to do so. If there's a strike, the responsibility is on the auto companies. They know what they have to do. They know that workers are really dissatisfied with the current tiers, with the current wages, falling behind. They, I mean, they're not even keeping up to inflation. So I think the UAW demands are extremely reasonable. And I think that business consultants who say they're going to make the companies inst unstable financially, are, that's not true. Look at Germany. In Germany, you've had Volkswagen always in the top two, three for decades. And they've paid double what, we're, what auto workers here are paid. So, and the companies, they could be helping more. They could have agreed many years ago to national health care which would have dramatically reduced uh, their labor costs. They could agree now to work with the UAW and get what is called sectoral bargaining legislation. That would mean that everybody in the country in the auto industry would have to pay the same wages and benefits. So you'd be automatically be competitive. So the rhetoric about these demands being unreasonable is unreasonable rhetoric. It is a very fair demands that Sean, and he calls them and he's right, they're the members demands. If you go to the plant gates and talk to workers, they're upset, they're angry, they want coal, they want to get rid of tears. No worker feels it's right for you and I to be doing the same job and paid a different rate of pay. That's wrong. So I'm very excited. I think we've got great leadership and they're on the path to get a really good contract for the members. And the only question on the strike is, are the companies going to be fair? They've given their CEOs 46 or 40 percent, over 40 percent, mm -hmm. I think it's 46, mm -hmm. but over 40 percent raises just in the last four years. Workers should get the same. That's all Sean's saying. Let's have a fair system. He does not want to strike. The members do not want to strike. Mm -hmm. But don't mistake. If they have to strike to get fairness, they're going to. Now, Bob, I'm curious. Tiered wage systems, uh, a 32-hour work week, pension plans, those are all things that workers are vying for. What do you believe would probably be abandoned? I, I, no way I can say that. If you're not at the table, that would be frivolous of me to say that. That's up to... Sean and the leadership, I don't, you know, again, because I think the demands are very reasonable mm -hmm. compared to Germany. Uh, the, the company, and they've been so profitable, uh, uh, $250 billion over the last 10 years, $21 million already this year, year, year. It's just they can definitely meet the demands, and they need to work together then to be competitive, and they can do that by working with Sean on national health care and working with Sean on sectoral bargaining legislation. You mentioned Sean doesn't want a strike. Presumably, many of the workers don't want a strike. Of course, there is this huge UAW strike fund, but that's not the same as being paid your typical wage, right? What would that really be like for the workers, it's, if and when? Strikes are always difficult, but you have to sometimes go through difficulties to win fairness and win justice. Look at civil rights struggles, look at union struggles in the beginning, look at women's rights struggles. People went through pain before you got justice. I hope that that doesn't have to happen. I hope that the companies are fair and reasonable and put really good settlements on the table. But if they don't, the leadership and most importantly, the membership is ready to take on the fight if they have to. Hmm. Final question, Bob. You know, so let's say the strike does happen. How does this impact the workers as well as just the average consumer watching this right now? Well, everybody will benefit if the UAW gets the kind of agreement that they're fighting for. So workers know that. I think the community knows that. If you're a small business, boy, it would be a big boom. Look at what the Teamsters just did. Those wages that they won will help everybody in those communities where those workers are. You know, look at our society now. 
the working class, working people have been falling further and further behind. Great contracts by the UAW, Teamsters, and others will help everybody in society, everybody in America. Final, final question, if you can answer quickly, because sure. we're short on time, but what comes next, and do you expect the momentum to pick up as we get closer to September 14th? Yes, momentum always picks up at this time, but what happens next depends on the companies. Are they going to look at, they're going to have to do a cost analysis. UAW members are ready to take on a tough, long strike if they have to. Mm -hmm. Do companies want to do that, mm -hmm. or do they want to give a really good economic offer? Well, Bob King, former president of the United Auto Workers Union, thank you so much for your expertise. Thank you. Appreciate your time.